Hey, it's Mike here, and today, more new vegan studies. This time, it's a vegan science roundup, looking at only studies that have come out this year so far. We've got a ton of topics today in the area of health. We're gonna be looking at depression rates in vegans versus meat eaters, with some good news there for once, and then also various diseases such as breast cancer and kidney disease. And we're even gonna be looking at a study that reviewed diet and COVID studies. We also have a dental health study and some other health studies as well as some sort of animal activism related ones. One that has to do with the effectiveness of vegan activism and more or less finds a backfire effect, which we'll look into. And finally, a study that essentially asked who is more compassionate, vegans or people that eat meat? Let's just go. I wanna start off with this Australian study on depression. Now, because we've had bad press like this from the Daily Mail about vegetarians being more depressed, which has been used to attack vegans, I wanted to have something positive. And that traced back to studies like this that are not even on vegans. Well, it did look at more total subjects. It is funded by the meat industry. Yet the Australian study actually looks directly at vegans. It compared vegans, vegetarians, and meat eaters in various depression scores. It had 215 vegans, which is a decent amount. And first looking at the mean depressive symptom score, vegans were 32% lower than meat eaters with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. So solid finding. And note a score of 16 is indicative of significant or mild depressive symptomology. They were above that on average. And it goes further, they also tested DASS 21 scores for anxiety and depression, which is what those previous studies have looked at. And once again, the vegans were statistically significantly better. And heck, in the anxiety score, they were 45% lower, kabloom. And an important note, if you are already vegan and planning to stay that way, they also looked at the quality of each diet and how that affected the depression score that was associated. And they found, of course, that the higher quality, really just the healthier somebody's diet was, the lower their depression score was as well, with in each group. So healthier vegan equals better than less healthy vegan. But as for vegans having lower depression rates, I have to once again mention that this is a observational study. It can't determine causation. That's what I said about the other ones, showing that they were worse off. But this is balancing the scale a little bit. And until we have one that's maybe a trial, we can't determine causation. So at least it feels good. Next up, we have a study on chronic kidney disease. And I've been waiting for just a general population comparison of rates of chronic kidney disease for vegans. And this is the closest we've gotten. It's not the general population. It is patients with hyperuricemia or high levels of uric acid in their blood of various diets and then what their chronic kidney disease rates were. They looked at over 200 vegans and like nearly 3000 meat eaters. Uric acid is a waste product from eating food and various things can raise it. You can just pause to read. This is just basic Wikipedia facts, which it's an okay source for. And they say of these alcohol is the most important factor. And for the results, the vegans had 31 to 38% lower rates of chronic kidney disease, depending on the model that they looked at, which is, you know, pretty notable, less disease, that's cool. Anyway, this finding is in line with a lot of research about why a plant-based diet would help with kidney function, but you know, we need more research to know exactly what's going on here. Enough kidneying around, let's get to the, the breast of it. That's not even a saying, is it? Anyway, onto this breast cancer study that looked at fatigue in women who were receiving chemotherapy who were put on a high protein plant-based diet or a control. This is a randomized controlled trial, a high level of evidence. And for some background from this study that I found, yeah, about 99% of women going through breast cancer chemo experience fatigue with 60% of that being more intense. So right along those lines from the study, our baselines were about 60% of this fatigue in each group. However, the plant-based group's fatigue levels dropped in half down to 28%, which is amazing. However, the control group's fatigue levels trended upwards even higher. Oh, they went up to basically 80%. So that is an incredible finding. Not sure exactly what the mechanism is there, maybe lower inflammation, etc. But next we have some BMI related findings, which can be concerning when you see BMI going down a little bit. If somebody is 
already obese, it can be a good thing if they're at a low weight for survivability. It can be risky. However, in this case, they did a breakdown of where the weight loss was coming from, and it turned out that they didn't just lose fat in the vegan group, but they gained muscle. Kablam, chemothera, rippy diet, because they ripped. I don't know. But finally, the controlled diet's muscle mass went down. So they were eating plants and going up in muscle mass, staying on meat, going down, and finally there were no conflicts of interest declared. Anyway, moving on to the next. Well, this next study wasn't in humans. It's still interesting. And that was how plant-based polyphenols, really antioxidants, were able to kill leukemia cells in a Petri dish. Now, this is where cancer ends up killing itself, which is called apoptosis, quote, or programmed cell death is a precise and systematic mechanism that is aimed at removing damaged or abnormal cells and is very useful to control, treat, and prevent cancer. And quote, induction of apoptosis with the least or no toxicity to natural tissues is one of the useful effects of many plant-based bioactive compounds. Crush that cancer. Next up, we have this Austrian study on B12 supplement prevalence and they found that 92% of Austrian vegans were taking B12 supplements, though they would, of course, like it to be 100. Who knows how much fortified food the other ones were getting, but they say, quote, Austrian vegans can be characterized as predominantly young, female, urban, highly educated, and non-obese. In other news, vegan travel to Austria has increased since this study came out. I'm just joking. On to the next. This Norwegian study looked at the meat substitute and sort of plant-based dairy alternative consumption of vegans, vegetarians, and pescatarians. And you can see right here that, yeah, about 90% of vegans eat some of these products, no crap. And the study hints at an important lesson, and that is that they found that a significant source of saturated fat is these products for vegans and vegans only, because of course the other ones are getting it from animal fat. So it's just a good reminder to be turning over, you know, dairy alternatives and mock meats and seeing what the saturated fat gram content is. Make sure to keep that lower. Of course, those coconut and palm oils can really crank that up there. Next, we have the Swedish government funded study, which looks at replacing animal protein with plant protein and the cardiovascular disease mortality, as well as type two diabetes prevalence. And as you guessed, it helps. They say, quote, replacement of animal protein with plant protein for sustainability may also be considered as a public health strategy to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes. No, it's a review that looked at a ton of different studies. And because there are a limited amount of studies, particularly some that are associative, they're epidemiological, they did say that this was only limited dash suggestive quality of evidence. So, ooh, suggestive, these researchers are acting up. Actually, it just means they want more research before they are at least willing to say that it is high quality. I believe it's it's some pretty good research. All right, next up, we got dental health here. Mostly positive findings for vegans from this meta-analysis. There's always a lot of concern like, oh my God, vegans' teeth are gonna fall out because of course, any concern will be thrown at vegans. Anti-vegan Shannon Michaela actually in her video was like, oh, gums bleed on a vegan diet. And that's when you realize you need to quit. Blurdy Blur responded to her. Well, guess what? The study's findings were that meat eaters had more bleeding than vegans or vegetarians. They also found that meat eaters had worse periodontal health, which is the area around your teeth, including like your gums and further in. And we have known for a while that meat consumption is associated with periodontal disease, so that tracks. They also had some particular differences that were only clear in the over 60 age category. For example, vegans had less cavities, which is cool. Now for the only negative one, apparently they had increased dental erosion compared to meat eaters. This is a little weird because dental erosion, I believe is required in order to have cavities. You know, the thinning of the enamel, breakdown of the enamel potentially, which for vegans is probably caused from eating acidic smoothies or perhaps some acidic. And you can prevent that by using a straw for smoothies or rinsing your mouth after having some acidic fruit. And surprisingly, the NIH does say from this page that enamel can repair itself by using minerals from saliva and fluoride from toothpaste and other sources. So this is possibly once again, another effect of vegans having lower fluoride toothpaste usage. I have a video on that. Moving on to this review that looked back on studies for diet and COVID. And there's some interesting findings I hadn't seen before. 
you know, there's studies I've talked about before on this channel, like the one showing that people eating even a loosely plant-based diet had 73% lower odds of having moderate to severe COVID. We also had another one where healthier plant-based diet indexes, if they were higher, were associated with about a 20% lower chance of getting COVID at all, which is cool. Not some vegan immunity ticket that some vegans, I'm sure were pretending that they had, but there was an interesting study out of Poland as well. And this was unique in that it just looked at younger people that were healthy by basic metrics, but basic metric. They then looked at their chance of contracting COVID and quote, people with balanced diet and an average daily consumption of greater than 500 grams of vegetables and fruit and greater than 10 grams of nuts had an 86% lower risk of COVID-19, holy crap, compared to those who consumed less of those. That is fascinating. And going back to the review we were originally talking about, they point to various phytochemicals, we're talking vitamin C, beta carotene, folate, zinc, blah, 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 which are important for the immune system and that these antioxidants can be, of course, anti-inflammatory and partially antiviral. And that quote, it is therefore important to adapt eating patterns so that the consumption of plant-based foods predominates. Plant domination. Next up, just really quick, we have a study that was like, oh, are vegans worse at doing athletic training than non-vegans? I'm sure that's been thrown <laughs> at vegan athletes before. Well, this study looked at things like how much these athletes were running per week, etc., And they found that there was no difference in the training patterns of vegans versus non-vegans in this group. Moving on. This one is cool. I found that sourdough fermentation increases the antioxidant effectiveness of wheat. And that makes sense because traditionally cultures have been fermenting all sorts of plant foods. And this is just one of the many benefits. It's cool to see that show up in a study. And finally, I wanna get onto the topic of more like ethical vegan studies right off the bat. We have one that looked at heartfulness in vegans and non-vegans. And heartfulness includes things like compassion in various ways. And they found, quote, this study provides evidence that vegans and vegetarians scored higher in several aspects of heartfulness. And vegans tended to score even higher than vegetarians. Both demographic and diet related variables could predict heartfulness. Maybe it's because their arteries aren't as clogged, their hearts are more full of blood. Okay, next. <laughs> Which has to do with the effectiveness of vegan activism and sort of measuring that. It's an interesting study and it sort of gives some hints as to a potential backfire effect of vegan activism that I've talked about can occur. They say, quote, the current findings suggest that depictions of vegan protests elicit worse attitudes toward this movement, regardless of how peaceful that protest may be. You know, the study essentially asked people, how likely are you to avoid vegans, you know, before and after seeing some protests? And it didn't even matter if they were disruptive or not, especially in women compared to men. Women said they were more likely to dodge vegans after seeing some protests. I think this is probably the result of seeing any group protesting something that you do. You're just gonna have a negative backfire effect. What is the solution for this? I'm not sure the researchers even say the future research is needed to examine whether other forms of activism can ameliorate or lessen negative reactions to vegan activism. You know, is there a solution that doesn't trigger people? We gotta find it because it's not like we can just stop trying to get people to stop killing animals and all that stuff. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this study as much as I did because I've got that ADD sometimes. I just wanna bounce around from topic to topic. And it was just nice to see vegans for once having way lower levels of depression and anxiety and you know the better oral health, you know, lower chronic kidney disease for those people and all of those other interesting findings. So let me know down below what you think about all of this. If there's any studies you want me to do a whole video on, for example, let me know. Also just general topic requests, the row em at me. And as always, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.